Hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to be doing the solutions video for worksheet 18. I hope everyone finds this useful. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first question we're going to look at is consider the tuna shark system given by the equations T prime and S prime. Uh, we wish to verify that um, 0, 0, and actually I'm going to call this 40, 50, are the two equilibrium points of the system. Um, and so uh, just to clarify, zero, the first coordinate point corresponds to the tuna population, and the second coordinate point corresponds to the shark population, and the first coordinate point corresponds to the tuna population, and the second coordinate point corresponds to the shark population. And so I'm going to change this question too. Um, and so uh, basically, in order to verify that something is an equilibrium point, we need to be able to show that when evaluated at that point, uh, both of the change equations, or all of the change equations, um, are equal to zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this problem actually for the equilibrium point uh, 40, 50, and I'm going to show that this is in fact an equilibrium point, and then I'll leave uh, the point zero, zero as an exercise. If you guys are confused at all, I'm happy to answer any questions or during office hours. Um, so essentially what we want to do is we want to plug in 40, 50 into the change equation T prime. So we want to evaluate T prime at 40, 50, and S prime at 40, 50. And we want to make sure that these two equations are equal to zero. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We have T prime is equal to 0 0.5 T, which is 40, minus 0 0.01 S, which is 50, times T, which is 40. Over here we have S prime is equal to 0.005s, which is uh, 50, um, times uh, t, which is 40, minus 0 0.2 times s, which is 50. Uh, when we go ahead and plug this into our calculators, we can see that 0 0.5 times 40 is equal to 20. 0 0.01 of 50 times 40 is equal to 20 as well. And so this whole thing is equal to 0. Um, on the other hand, uh, 0 0.05 times 50 times 40 uh, should equal 10. And this should equal 10 as well, which means this entire equation is equal to 0. So we have T prime is equal to 0 and S prime is equal to 0 when we have 40 tuna and 50 sharks, um, indicating that um, 40, 50 is in fact an equilibrium point. And you can go through the same process to show that 0, 0 is an equilibrium point as well. Okay, so uh, let us now focus on the equilibrium point uh, 40, 50. Let me just highlight that so it's clear. Uh, let's focus on that equilibrium point. Um, use the vector field uh, and trajectory shown below to determine which type of equilibrium point it is. So in lecture and in recitation, you guys should have discussed two different types of equilibrium, three, sorry, three different types of equilibrium points. They're stable, unstable, and neutral equilibrium points. Um, let's go through them systematically to determine which one, which equilibrium point this one is. Um, so if we have an equilibrium point that is unstable, what that means is that if we deviate at all away from this equilibrium point, uh, there's no way to go back to the equilibrium point. So um, the vectors are moving away from that equilibrium point, which makes this an unstable equilibrium point. Um, on the other hand, if we have a stable equilibrium point, uh, then the opposite is true. If we move away at all from um, this particular equilibrium point, um, what happens is we get sent back to that equilibrium point um, based on following the arrows represented in the vector field. Uh, so this is called a stable equilibrium point. However, in the example that we're looking at, if we look at 50 or 40, 50, so this is 40 and this is 50, um, we don't have either one of those behaviors occurring. What happens is if there is a perturbation in the system, we end up um, oscillating or circling around this particular equilibrium point. So we're not uh, shooting away, we're not being shot towards the equilibrium point, but rather we're oscillating hood, we're oscillating um, around the uh, 40, 50 equilibrium point. And so we classify this type of equilibrium point as a neutral equilibrium point. 
or a center? And that is the answer for this particular question. All right, um, moving on to part C. At any given point in the state space, describe the trajectory followed by the system. So all this question is asking us to do is to determine, um, to sort of characterize the complete behavior uh, produced by these particular change equations. And basically, uh, we can characterize this because we found all the equilibrium points of the system. Uh, specifically, we know that zero, zero, and um, we know that zero, zero, and at 40, 50, there is no change. So if we start at either one of these points, because they're equilibrium points, and more specifically, because uh, the change equations are equal to zero at these points, um, nothing happens. Uh, the trajectory is simply a dot, we just stay there forever. On the other hand, if we pick any other point in the two-dimensional state space, we can observe from this vector field generated by the equations t prime and s prime um, we can observe from the vector field that we will have a trajectory that circles around 40 50. So uh, basically, essentially what we talked about in part B, if we are either on 40, 50 or 0, 0, there is no change in the system. However, if we pick any other type of point around, if we pick any other type of point, what happens is we're in this constant uh, oscillation or circulation um, around the equilibrium point 40, 50 from a trajectory perspective. I hope that's clear. Okay, moving on to part D. Uh, what is the long-term behavior of the system? Um, hint, think about the time series associated to a trajectory. Well, the answer is um, we can essentially look at part C and look at all the behaviors of what we just characterized in order to determine what the long-term behavior is. So um, at what we just talked about is at zero, zero or 40, 50, because there are equilibrium points, um, the long-term behavior is that nothing will happen. We will stay at those equilibrium points forever. So at 0, 0 um, or 40, 50, we um, stay, um, so I should say it's more specifically with respect to the problem, um, the number of sharks and number of tuna does not change. So at 40, 50, for example, the number of sharks will forever be, um, the number of sharks will forever be uh, 50 and the number of tuna will be 40. And there'll be no change since we're staying there. However, if we start at any other point, um, as we discussed about the trajectories in part C, what will be happening is we'll have um, a trajectory that's circling around the equilibrium point 40, 50. And so if we were to think about this with respect to a time series, what does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and draw a time series. I know it's been a while, but um, it's something that will never really go away. So it's a good exercise to go through. Um, let's just go back and draw that properly. So if we have a time series, um, so let's pick a vector field. Let's pick um, this one and uh, pick points on that vector field. So let's have this be T naught, this be T one, this be T two, um, this be T three. And um, let's draw our time series associated with that trajectory I've just labeled. So we have, um, T and we have T naught, T1, T2, and T3. And if we created that plot like we've done so many times in the past, we have time 
we have a tuna and we have shark population. And if we look at each of these points, um, at T naught, there are approximately, um, I would say, uh, 60 uh, tuna. So T naught, T1, T2, T3. Sorry, this is getting a little bit small, but hopefully everyone can see this. Uh, we have 60 tuna. We have how many shark? We have 50 shark. Um, at T1, we have about uh, 50 tuna. So T1, let me drop the things, 50. And then we have about uh, 70 shark. And then at T2, we have, uh, say, 30 tuna. Yeah, let's go with that. And um, 50 shark. And then at T3, we have uh, 50 tuna. So it goes back up. And we have um, how many? About uh, 30 shark. All right. And so let's go ahead and plot that using different colors. So we'll plot um, tuna in blue. So this is population on this. Um, so our coordinate points look like it's um, oscillating. We can count things by 10. So um, this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Yikes, this is yucky. Sorry, guys. Um, let me just erase this to make it a little bit more clean. Um, so we have counting by 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And we have, I'm gonna plot tuna first, the tuna population. So it's 60 at T naught, 50 at T1, 30 at T2, and then it goes back to 50. So we have this type of behavior which is not totally unexpected, given that you guys have probably plotted this at least 100 times at this point. Um, shark, I'm gonna do in red. So we start with uh, 50 shark, and then we have 70, so it goes up. And then um, we have at T2, what do we have? Uh, 50 again, yeah. And then 30. And then if we look at the original point, it's going to be 50 again. So it's going to go. So seeing this, I saw, I think we saw this on the first day of recitation. So um, yeah, so basically what is the long-term behavior of the system? Thinking about um, the time series associated with this specific trajectory that we've highlighted. Um, we can say that the, uh, that the long-term behavior um, if we're not at equilibrium points 40, 50, or 0, 0, um, the, the, uh, the shark population oscillates um, around 50. And uh, let me just erase to create some space again. And the tuna population oscillates around uh, 40. And depending on the trajectory, the magnitude of the oscillation will vary. Yeah, and so this is sort of tying together um, equilibrium points and their significance in terms of looking at the state space in two dimensions and as well as thinking about these things in terms of a time series and how populations will evolve over time with respect to a particular equilibrium point.
All right, so let's move on to the next page. Um, more of the same, really. Um, find the equilibrium point of the system. What does this point correspond to in terms of the system? All right, so let's go ahead and do that problem. Um, so again, equilibrium point is when um, x prime v prime is equal to zero. So we need all of our uh, differential equations to equal zero. And um, basically, um, like um, in your next class, you'll figure out how to find all of the equilibrium points. But because this, this specific problem asks you to find a specific equilibrium point, um, I claim to you that this equilibrium point is zero, zero. And we can verify this is the equilibrium point of the system by plugging this into our two-h range equation. So x prime, zero, zero, uh, v prime evaluated at zero, zero. And we wanna make sure that both of these equations does in fact equal zero where maybe I should be a little bit more specific, where um, this first coordinate point is x and the second coordinate point is v, the first coordinate point is x, the second coordinate point is v. So let's go and verify that. Um, x prime is equal to v is our first change equation, which means this is just equal to zero. And then v prime is um, negative zero plus zero, which is equal to zero. So um, we've just shown because x prime and v prime is equal to zero, that zero is zero is the equilibrium point of the system. And I think a natural question you should be asking is, how do I know that I found all the equilibrium points? Um, and this is something we'll explore in more in the next recitation worksheet. So uh, for now, I think just knowing how to verify equilibrium points as equilibrium points is the main point of this worksheet. Um, and because it says find the equilibrium point, we know that there's only one and we just found that it was zero, zero. All right, so B, um, the vector field and the trajectories of the system is shown below. Uh, determine the type of equi equilibrium of, the type of equilibrium of the equilibrium point. Explain your reasoning. All right, so we, ha we briefly discussed this um, above, but the re I claim to you that this, oops, I'm so sorry. Um, I claim to you that this equilibrium point is in fact an unstable equilibrium point. And the reason is the same reason we talked about above. Um, if we deviate, um, because if there is a per slight perturbation, don't quite know how to spell that word, perturbation, um, so if there's a slight perturbation, um, we move away, we like dramatically move away from no matter where we are, if there's a slight perturbation, all the trajectories are pointing away from the equilibrium point. So if there's a slight perturbation, um, we move away from the equilibrium point. Oops. Zero, zero, and that's why it's unstable. Um, specifically, it's called an unstable spiral because as you can see, the trajectories are uh, in a spiral formation. Okay, so part C, at any given point in the state space, describe the trajectory followed by the system. Um, yeah, so this is the same uh, question as last time um, that we saw on this page. All it's asking is for us to fully characterize the behaviors of the trajectories in the two-dimensional state system. And to do that, um, essentially, we need to determine what the equilibrium points are and uh, look at the behaviors around the equilibrium points. So um, if we're at zero, zero, which is our only equilibrium point because we were told so, um, we stay at zero, zero. Um, um, anywhere else, the trajectory, the trajectories, if we start anywhere else in the state space, uh, the trajectories will be spiraling away from the equilibrium point zero, zero. So that's a complete characterization of what's going on here. We have an equilibrium point at zero, zero. And if we start at any other point, um, if we start at any other point besides zero, zero, um, our trajectory is telling us 
that our vector field is telling us that our trajectory will be spiraling away from that equilibrium point. All right, um, excuse me, let me look at part D. So what is the long-term behavior of the system and more generally the long-term behavior associated with this type of equilibrium point? And again, what we're gonna do to answer this question is think about the time series associated with it. So um, basically, so I can use this sort of vector field, what I'm gonna do is actually write part D on um, this worksheet or um, this particular area. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this and um, we're gonna talk about the long-term behavior of a trajectory associated with um, this particular vector field. Um, so uh, in particular, what we can choose is we can look at uh, a particular trajectory. So the one that's highlighted in the black is the one we will use and we can look at different time times correlated to that. So um, let this one be T zero, let this point be um, T one, let this point be T2, let this point be T3, and let this point be T4. And this will hopefully um, give us a sense of what's going on uh, with respect to the time series. Okay, so like we did before, um, we can talk about time as being part of this plot that we create. Uh, we can talk about X and we can talk about V. And T, the first time is T0, the second time is T1, the second, third time is T3, or sorry, T2, um, the third time is T3, and the fourth time is T4. And we're going to um, look at what the X and V values are from this vector field, um, looking at this particular trajectory in black. Okay, so at T0, um, looks like our X value is zero, or sorry, um, at T0, uh, let me go back. Um, looks like our x value is, mm, so this is one, right? Um, so one, two, three, four, five, so it's about like one fifth. Uh, so it's teeny tiny. And then our v value is zero because there's no height. And then at t1, we have, this is about um, like, so this is, uh, both of these values are negative. So for the first one, let's say, I think it's actually both negative 0 0.75, and then this is negative 0 0.075 as well. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. We just need to get a sense of what the trajectory is looking like with respect to the time series. Um, so at T2, what we have is negative uh, 1.75, I want to say, and then it's going to be negative, less negative, so it's going to be negative uh, 0 0.2, sure. And then T3, what we have is uh, like negative, uh, negative 0 0.6, I wanna say. And then we have, uh, so right here, oops, no, that was wrong. Um, negative 1.6 is what I meant to say. Negative 1.6, and then there's a positive height, which is about uh, one. And then T4, it's even closer in here. So it's gonna be about negative uh, 0.75. And it's going to be, the height is going to be about, um, what is this? So negative 0 0.75 and then 2.5, let's say. All right, so let's plot this trajectory or sorry, let's plot the time series associated with this trajectory. So we have time, um, we have um, uh, some kind of units here, and then we have, let's plot the X values associated with it, which is position, right? Yeah, so we're, looking, we're talking about the um, mass spring system. Um, so, um, yeah, so um, we'll talk about time. So we have T naught, T1, T2, T3, and T4, and we're going to look at, um, we're going to plot uh, the position, which is X in red. Okay, and so these values are a bit weird, so I need to have a negative axis, actually. Um, hopefully that will be sufficient. Um, and so we have Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
Uh, okay, so what we have is we have, um, yeah, so what we have is we have negative one-fifth, um, or sorry, the first value is going to be one-fifth, uh, which is, sorry, 0 0.2. And what we're going to, so let's do things in terms of one. So this is one, this is two, this is negative one, this is negative two. Um, and so T naught is going to be uh, 0 0.2, so let's say right there. And then T1, so we're doing this in red because we're talking about the X values. So 0 0.2, negative 0 0.75. Um, and then one, negative 1 1.75. And then um, negative 1.6. And then 0 0.75. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Good. Okay, cool. All right, and then we're going to connect that. And essentially what's going to happen is that these oscillations are going to get bigger and bigger. And then we'll do a V in blue. And so we have, um, sorry, the first point is going to be um, zero. The second point is going to be negative 0 0.75. Uh, the third point is going to be negative 0 0.2, which is smaller. Um, and then the third point is going to be 1 and then 2.5. So we have this kind of behavior going on in the same type of larger oscillations. Okay, um, and so at any given point, describe the trajectory. So um, the problem that we're actually doing um, is D. So what is the long-term behavior of the system and more generally the long-term behavior with this type of equilibrium point? So to answer this question, what we can say based on our time series we just plotted is that in the long-term, um, if we start at equilibrium point zero zero, there is no change. Oops, change. However, if we start at any other point, any other point, um, what will happen? Well, we can see from this that the um, oscillations, the, the uh, change in position, which is denoted by red, um, will oscillate around zero, but the magnitude will get bigger and bigger. And same with the velocity. The velocity will oscillate around the equilibrium point zero, but the magnitude of the oscillations will get bigger and bigger over time. So to write this down formally, we can say if we start at any other point, um, the position and velocity will oscillate around two, around, sorry, zero. Um, but as time goes on, the magnitude of these oscillations becomes bigger and bigger. And hopefully that's clear from the um, trajectory that we've drawn. And you can see that at any state, at any point that we pick, um, this sort of spiral trajectory will happen, which means that uh, this sort of time series will be uh, the time series associated with that trajectory will look something like the one that we've just drawn. Um, obviously not the same, but given different initial conditions, but um, the same type of behavior that will be occurring. And that is really the point of this class, understanding the general behavior of the system and not focus on each point, but be able to characterize these different behaviors depending on initial conditions. Okay. Um, now what we're going to do is sort of prepare ourselves for the next class. Um, um, so next class, we will determine the type of equilibrium points um, in the Dear Moose competition. To do so, we'll have to compute the equations of lines in DM. 
to be ready, we'll do some of these computations here. Okay, so um, essentially what we're doing here is in the, you know, sort of in the last two questions, they've given you the equilibrium points and asked you to verify what those equilibrium points are. Uh, what this next class and this exercise will allow you to do is to sort of find all the equilibrium points by yourself. So what we're going to just do is we're going to follow the instructions here and hopefully when you do this in class, how you actually find the equilibrium points will become clear. So the first thing that we need to do here is it asks us to consider the two equations and rewrite these equations in, in slope intercept form and draw these lines in the graph below. Okay. So notice that D is on the x-axis and M is on the y-axis. So slope intercept form, recall, is Y is equal to MX plus B, where M is slope. And um, we usually think of X being on the x-axis and Y being on the y-axis. But really what we want now is an equation such that we can say, um, well, all of this is pretty bad notation, but like, uh, well, we want to be able to get our equation into the following form. Um, M is equal to slope, whatever the slope is, times uh, D, right, plus some intercept. So instead of a a Y, we're talking about M. Instead of M, we're, I'm just calling it slope, and instead of D, I'm calling it X. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, we just need to change this equation so that, such that we can write it in this form. So we have 15 minus 2m minus d is equal to 0. Um, we're essentially just going to solve for m. So uh, we have 2m um, is equal to adding 2m to both sides, adding 2m to both sides is equal to 15 minus d, right? Um, and then we both divide both sides by 2. And we have m is equal to 15 over 2 minus d, which means m is equal to minus d uh, plus 15 over 2. So this is one of the equations we get, and specifically from this one. And um, then we need to do the same thing for the this equation. So let's go ahead and solve for m. Um, m is going to, so we have, uh, rewriting this, we have 10 minus d is equal to m and we have it actually just from that one step by adding m to both sides so we have m is equal to negative d plus 10. so what we want to do now is plot both of these equations so let me go ahead and do that in different colors i'm going to plot this equation in this color and uh, the other equation in blue so i'll go ahead and do the red equation first um, so uh, there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, we know that this is the uh, y-intercept, so 15 over 2 is the y-intercept, um, so 7.5. So we're going to start here, um, and then we know that the slope is negative 1 over 1. So rise over 1, uh, go down 1 over 1, and we have the next point being here, and so the equation the equation for this line, or the line for this equation should look like this. Um, let's go ahead and look at the second equation. Uh, we know that the slope in um, the y-intercept is 10 here, so we can just go ahead and plot that. And then we also have a rise over run here. Did I do something wrong? No, so we have negative one over one. Um, so we're doing the same thing, um, go down one over one, um, go down one over one, go down one over one, go down one over one, etc. Oops, did I do this wrong? Huh. Let me just quickly check my math. Um, hmm. Fifteen. Yep, I did this wrong. I forgot to divide this by two. So that was the error I made. I'm so sorry. Let me just erase this really quickly. Uh, okay. So sorry about this. So the only error I made, still a big one, but <laughs> um, the only error I made was I didn't 
So this should be negative one over two. So let me get these colors right. So uh, when I divided this by two, I forgot to divide d by two. So an arithmetic error here. So I have negative one half d, um, which means that my y-intercept will be the same, so 7.5. So 15 divided by two is 7.5. I'm gonna go down one over two, down one over two. So I have my line looking like this instead. I apologize. And then um, to plot the other line, that's this line, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start at 10 because that's my y-intercept and then I'm going down one over one, down one over one, down one over one, et cetera. And so when I plot this line, I have this sort of ordeal. And right away we see what the answer to b is, compute the intersection point of these two lines. We know that the intersection point is five, five. And we can just see that because this is where they cross. Cool. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. I apologize for the error. Um, hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Uh, we're going to rewrite these equations in slope-intercept form once again, um, hopefully with a correct arithmetic this time. Um, so the first equation is 15 minus m minus d is equal to zero. Notice that our d is on the x-axis and m is on the y-axis, so we want to get something in m equals form. So um, let's just add m to the other side, so 15 um, Yeah, so we have 15 is equal to 15 minus m is, sorry, we have um, 15 minus d is equal to m, right? So we're just adding m to both sides and getting this. All right, the second equation is going to be 10 minus 0 0.5 d minus m is equal to zero. Uh, let's go ahead and solve this for, again, m. We have um, 10 minus 0 0.5 d is equal to m. So pretty easy there as well, uh, just moving m over. All right, so let's plot this one in red and then this one in blue. So the first one's gonna be in red and we have that the intercept is 15. And then we have that our uh, slope is negative one over one, so down one over one, down one over one, down one over one. And so we can draw this line quite nicely. And then the blue one is going to have, um, is going to have an intercept, a y-intercept of 10. And it's going to be, uh, another way to write 0 0.5 is negative one over two. So we have, uh, what this is, is down one over two, down one over two. And so we have this line for the second equation that is given. And what we can see is that um, what we have is we wrote these, we wrote these equations in slope and intercept form and drew the lines in the graph. And we know that from this graph that the lines intersect at five, 10. And yeah, you'll use this to essentially discover all of the equilibrium points of a system um, without having to, without having us to sort of give it to you. So yeah, I hope this is helpful and I hope everyone has Great rest of their day. Take care.